Hello and welcome to this walkthrough of Divisimate 2. We are so excited to put this new version out into the world. We worked really hard on it and it's available right now with cross-grade and upgrade offers all around. This major update brings a lot of new features that have been requested over time and some amazing things that maybe none of you saw coming. In this video we want to give you an overview of all the new things that this major update brings and then there's going to be a number of deeper videos coming up over the next days and weeks looking into the details of the different features. This is going to be a pretty long video so here's an overview of all the things we will be talking about. So you can see we have a lot of ground to cover, let's get started. Probably the most requested and also highest on our personal wishlist was to bring an arpeggiator plugin to DVZMate. But this is not your run-of-the-mill ARP, but it has a number of bells and whistles that we are really proud of. All these settings up here you'll know from any other arpeggiator. You got your note order, rate, swing and some repetition and transposition settings. Then you've got your velocity stepper down here where you can freely adjust the duration and number of steps. If you're using legato patches, you can even activate this little connector icon to make the notes of the arpeggiator overlap to trigger legato transitions. And then you can add negative delay to those notes to compensate the legato delay so the notes still land on time. In addition to the velocity stepper, you can freely add up to four synchronized controller lanes to shape dynamics, timbre, vibrato, pitch bend, or whatever else your instrument allows you to control over the length of your pattern. And then there's the expert mode that can be toggled up here. That is a whole different beast. It gives you an insane amount of control to customize the exact pattern and even allows you to program full-blown riffs and melodies. And it's even possible to lock all these transpositions to the global scale. There's so much to say about this plugin and I can hardly touch on all the features here, let alone explain them in depth. So make sure to check out our separate video on it, it really is a plugin with nearly infinite possibilities. There's another new plugin in DVZMate 2 and that is the Transformer plugin. This one is a bit more technical in nature. It works as a kind of logical processor for notes, controllers and other messages. So on the left side of a line you enter a kind of message with a range of values you want to transform and on the right side you put in the resulting data type and range that you want. So for example right now this line here does nothing as it has CC1 from 0 to 127 on both sides, the same values for input and output. But if I change the upper bound on the output side here to 67, the range of the module coming in on this part will be compressed. So all the module data across the full range will now be scaled down so the highest value it ever goes to will be 67 and the lowest is 0. You could also, for example, turn all the notes that are played into one specific note. So you have a note range on the left and a single note on the right. This is handy when you have a percussion instrument mapped to only a specific key and you want, for example, your snare drum to play a hit every time you play any key. And now let's say I want the Piatti to play along on just the loudest notes. Then I start with the same configuration and just go in and turn up the lower bound of the input velocity and make sure to block all the lower velocities. There's a number of uses for this plugin, from limiting the dynamic range of a specific instrument to blocking a certain note range, or you can quantize all notes to the global scale or turn incoming program changes into specific key switches. The plugin is pretty open-ended and flexible, so once you have grasped the logic of it, it gives you a lot of freedom for experimentation. Again, there would be more to say about this plugin, so make sure to subscribe and check out the dedicated video to see a number of hands-on uses of the transformer once it comes out. For now, let's move on to the next thing. Now those were two new ways to manipulate or expand the musical content for the instruments, but there's also a new feature regarding the amount of instruments you can play at once. Divisimate 2.0 introduces multi-timbral ports. 
You can go into the part properties of any part and activate the multi timbrel functionality. This then lets you choose and activate or deactivate different MIDI channels for this part, and as you can see, they get their own row in the matrix. The routings and plugins on these channels are entirely autonomous, so each of these rows is acting like its own part. This way, if you want to include your whole percussion section with two harps and all different melody instruments in your template, you will no longer run out of ports. In theory, this allows you to build orchestrations with up to 512 instruments at once. But keep in mind that the load on your CPU scales with the number of instruments you are recording at once, so each system will have its own limit there. Also, working with multi-timbral ports works a bit differently in each DAW, and some have some special needs. So make sure to check out our website for information on your DAW of choice, so you don't get any surprises. Let's move over to the perform page for a bit, because there are a few big new things there. First off, you'll notice that there's this little gear icon next to the performance quick load. That will bring you to the new performance settings. This gives you a few settings that will apply specifically to that performance and all orchestrations within it. A feature that has been requested a lot in the past is the option to customize the number of pages for your performance. So instead of always 5 pages, you can have up to 20 different pages, or just 2. That's up to you. Below that, you can activate the global key switch area. This lets you define a node range for your key switches, and when it's activated, this range will be sent unaltered to all routed instruments in any preset within this performance. To achieve the same thing previously, you had to route the low range to a whole bunch of instruments and do this for every single preset. So this saves a lot of time, does not occupy the low range, and it also looks a lot cleaner. In the Humanization tab, you have the opportunity to set different humanization settings for this performance that override the global values chosen in the settings window. So if you got a performance that works best with very specific humanization settings, you can set those here. And then there's the Preset Change tab. This one is exciting. You know how in Divisimate 1 presets could only change when all nodes and the sustain pedal were released? Well, that's no longer the only way it can work. In this tab, you can toggle this behavior of waiting for sustain pedal and node releases on and off. And when it's turned off, you can choose from three different transition behaviors for instant preset changes. These define what exactly happens when you change a preset while nodes are still playing. The retrigger mode is easiest to understand. When you change presets, all nodes in the old orchestration are stopped and the new one starts playing immediately, including all the arpeggiators and other timed plugins. The merge mode is similar with the one exception that if there are common nodes between the presets, those are preserved and continue playing without interruption. For example, if you have one preset that has just strings in one voicing and you switch to a preset that has the same voicing with brass on top, the strings just continue playing and the brass join them just as if you cued them in as a conductor. And then there's the overlap mode, which is a really interesting addition. It means that the old orchestration just continues playing as long as the old notes are held, but any new notes get played by the new orchestration. This one is especially inspiring to play, because now moving between orchestrations can be completely seamless. So you can do stuff like this. But the original reason we developed these transitions is that they would be extremely powerful in the new multipads. Multipads are essentially a pad on the perform page that in itself contains a number of presets that are switched between automatically. After you create a multipad, you can assign different presets to this little matrix and on the x and y axis, you can define the conditions that should control the preset change. So for example, you can have a multipad configuration where the orchestration changes depending on how strongly you hit the keys. Or 
Or you can have the automated voicing below the melody change as it gets to a higher register. This is especially useful in a jazz context. Up here you can set a specific transition mode for this particular multipad. So you can choose exactly the kind of transition behavior that suits the playable pad you're trying to build. Here's an example of the overlap mode seamlessly overlapping orchestrations to switch and combine them at just the right places. The Multipad Editor is a simple but really flexible tool where the real limits are your creativity. You can combine any kinds of presets here and build really bespoke specialized stuff that essentially results in very versatile playable patches. We will dive deeper into this feature another time, but for now let's move on. Now before we get into the whole VST, AU and AAX plugin business, let's look at some smaller additions and changes that will make your life easier. We have added the option to import individual parts of a preset into your current preset or into all presets of your performance. So let's say you want to change the names and port setup of all the presets in your performance at once. You can select a preset that has it, choose the parts you want to import, and click Import to Performance. Now every single preset in that performance has the names and setup changed. That's really useful when you're building a template and want to adjust a lot of existing presets to fit it. Another new thing, you can now multi-select the routings on the Orchestrate page and shift them around, copy them or delete them together to quickly clear out your routing. To allow you to organize your template more clearly, we introduced section headings that you can name and even collapse to make some room if your Orchestrate page gets a little bit overcrowded when you're using a lot of multi-timbral pods. Just right-click anywhere in the matrix to add one, rename it and drag it to the place where you want it. The global scale now lives down here as a proper global setting, visible and adjustable at all times. It was previously accessible in the Transposer plugin, but now the Arpeggiator and Transformer plugins also make use of it, so it gets its own place. You can use this lock icon to lock the global scale to its current setting. If it's unlocked, the global scale of the presets will be loaded as you switch orchestrations. If it's locked, it will just stay the same no matter what. And the same is true for the tempo. Again, this one has a lock and unlock option for you to decide whether you want to load the tempo a preset was saved with or if you want to keep the tempo setting the same as you change orchestrations. By default, this will be locked now because that's just how you usually want to use the tempo. Now for a big one. Like Divisimate Micro, Divisimate 2 can run as a plugin in your DAW. You can choose between sticking with a standalone workflow or use the plugin right within your DAW. Both ways have their advantages and you can choose which one you like more. All the perform page settings, assignments and performance data will be synchronized between projects and the standalone version, so you have access to all your orchestrations and layouts everywhere. Only the performance quick load can be different between projects as you may want to have different sets of orchestrations at hand in different templates. The plugin enables you to record and edit the data that goes into Divisimate. Or use pre-recorded MIDI altogether or even third-party generative MIDI plugins. But it goes even further than that. You can use DAW automations to control different parameters in Divisimate. This allows you to record your preset changes as you play them and play them back with the music that goes with it. That's actually something that people have asked for time and time again and there was just no other way to make that work than this plugin version. This all allows you to go into incredible detail and refine your orchestrations to a very high level. Especially if you're not someone who plays a lot of things live. 
In some DAWs, it is really tricky to have two different controllers as inputs on the same track without including all the other inputs. That's why we have included another feature in the next MIDI hub, the next MIDI merger port. When you select input devices in the next MIDI hub, you can activate the next MIDI merger port and it will actually create another virtual MIDI port onto which the selected MIDI inputs are combined and mirrored. This way you can merge your breath controller and keyboard into one input to select on your Divisimate 2 track in your DAW. By the way, this is a feature that will be coming to the hub with Divisimate Micro as well, as it's solving a problem that a lot of users were having there too. All right. That's all the big new things to cover in this video, though there are some more quality of life improvements that you'll find in the changelog. When we released Divisimate in 2019, we quickly started running up this wishlist of things we wanted to bring to the app. Some things came from you, our users, some things came from our own needs and wishes as composers. And we did release multiple free updates over the years, some adding really substantial features. Transposer scale lock, performances, and even Divisi modes, all that stuff actually was never part of version 1.0. We added that later. But at some point, it just became clear that we had to go back to the core of the app and build a more flexible foundation for all the things we still wanted to do. So that's what we did. This version is the result of years of intense development, and it finally has some of the big things we've been dreaming of since the very start. We hope you're as excited about these new features as we are. Divisimate 2 is available right now on our website. Before you check out, log into our user area with your Moonbase account to see your personal upgrade price and make sure to subscribe to this channel to see the upcoming feature deep dive videos. And that concludes the longest video we ever made. Thank you for watching and goodbye.